As he left office, President Obama warned President Trump that the most immediate foreign threat is nuclear-armed North Korea. In a significant uptick in the regime's aggressive rhetoric, North Korea has claimed its missile launch was a training exercise for a strike on a U.S. military base in Japan. This is according to the North state-run Korean Central News Agency today. It also threatened to turn South Korea and the United States into flames if the two allies encroach even an inch into its territory. The North state-run mouthpiece added that the missile launch was directly orchestrated by leader Kim Jong-un. The report said Kim also ordered the military to be fully prepared for strikes as the current climate could turn into a real war at any time. The United States called North Korea's launching of four medium-range missiles on Monday a very serious threat and said it was taking steps to strengthen its defense of South Korea. The North Korean news agency's pronouncements are usually regarded as propaganda for North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, but they said the launches early Monday were part of a drill to test potential strikes against the basis of the U.S. imperialist aggressor forces in Japan. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer told reporters Monday that the launches are consistent with North Korea's long history of provocative behavior and represent a very serious threat. We're going to start with some breaking news. South Korea and the United States have started deploying the U.S. Advanced Missile Defense System THAAD to the peninsula. South Korea's defense ministry said a little over an hour ago that parts of the THAAD battery have arrived. Now, that echoes a statement also from today by the U.S. Pacific Command that said it has deployed the first elements of the THAAD battery to South Korea on through on the decision the Allies had made in July. Now, the initial move to install the battery started on Monday, the same day North Korea fired off four ballistic missiles into the East Sea. Uh, the South Korean defense ministry said the remaining personnel and equipment will arrive soon adding that the THAAD battery will be fully installed within two months. Now hot on the heels of North Korea's missile launch, the United States has issued a fresh warning urging its citizens to avoid traveling to North Korea. The U.S. State Department on Monday issued a worldwide caution advising Americans to avoid traveling to North Korea due to the serious risk of arrest and long-term detention under the country's system of law enforcement. The department is required to update the travel warning every three months, making the update all the more surprising as it was last reissued uh, in February. Two American citizens are currently serving jail time in the North for allegedly ca carrying out subversive acts against the regime. On Monday, according to a U.S. official, multiple fast attack vessels from the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps forced a U.S. Navy ship in the Strait of Hormuz on Saturday. Reuters reported that the IRGCN boats came within 600 yards of the USNS Invincible, a tracking ship, and then stopped. The Invincible, accompanied by three shops from the British Royal Navy, was forced to alter its course. According to the officials, while attempts were made to communicate with the IRGCN ships over radio, there was no response. Officials called the interaction both unsafe and unprofessional. Yemeni forces have ambushed a Saudi military vehicle inside, the killing three soldiers. The Yemeni military officials said the Saudi troops died inside the vehicle after it was targeted and completely destroyed in the southwestern border city of Najran. Official added the attack occurred near a Saudi military post. Yemen's armed forces have been conducting an increasing number of similar attacks over the past few months in retaliation for Riyadh's ongoing bombardments of Yemeni cities and towns. Pakistan has rethought its border closure after a slew of violent attacks. In February, Pakistan closed its primary border crossings with Afghanistan. In the time since, a number of attacks from extremists have claimed the lives of dozens. Both the Taliban and ISIS, two of the most active extremist groups in the area, have claimed attacks. The Pakistani military said on March 6th that over the weekend, clashes led to 15 deaths. In response, Pakistan has decided to temporarily reopen the two popular border crossings at Torkham and Chaman. The two crossings will open on March 7th and 8th. The issue is just the latest flare in tension between Afghanistan and Pakistan. According to the Associated Press, the two countries have, for a long time, accused the other of ignoring militants in border areas. A display of Russian might in Sebastopol in Crimea March 2014. 
Moscow annexed the peninsula from Ukraine that month, Vladimir Putin was on hand to seal a transfer of power. Three years on, Kiev accuses Moscow of discriminating against ethnic Tatars and Ukrainians in Crimea. Some local residents, however, argue that Ukraine's claim should be dismissed because Moscow's takeover was approved in a referendum. Yes, most of the Crimean Tatars didn't vote, though some did take part in the referendum vote. But in general, the Russian-speaking population of Crimea was really happy and celebrated the return of Crimea to Russia. That return is one of two main areas of accusation in the proceedings against Moscow in The Hague. Please be seated. Kiev also accuses Russia of sponsoring terrorism in eastern Ukraine, where more than 9,750 people have been killed over the last three years. It is seeking reparations for the 2014 downing of Malaysian Airlines Flight 17, which killed 298 passengers and crew. The Kremlin denies sending troops or military equipment to eastern Ukraine, despite what Kiev and Western countries say is incontrovertible evidence. The international community has imposed economic sanctions on Moscow for interference in the country. The Russian Foreign Ministry is taking the ICJ hearing seriously with a delegation of 35 people in attendance. Ukraine contre Fédération de Russie. A UN report citing Israeli annexation urges companies to suspend all business ties that they may have in East Jerusalem and the West Bank. The Israeli news site Ynet discovered that a draft of the report, due to be published by the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, describes Israeli activity in the West Bank as a unilateral move towards annexation. The report emphasizes the need for humanitarian aid for Palestinians, as well as calling for companies to sever ties with West Bank settlements. The report notes that the year marks 50 years since the Six-Day War and the subsequent occupation of the West Bank. It also states that Israel's activities in the West Bank have led to a continuous settler growth and a unilateral takeover of widespread areas of Palestinian land in opposition to international law. The report goes on to state that Israel's actions have dire effects on Palestinian human rights in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Additionally, the report mentions concerns over Israel's plans to erect a national park at the occupied Hermon over towns in the Golan Heights and criticizes Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for saying that Israel will never relinquish control of the Golan. According to German officials, political relations between Germany and Israel have sunk to their lowest point in recent years. In Berlin, many are concerned that ties could become even further strained with Donald Trump's presidency, as he has expressed ambivalence about the creation of a Palestinian state, one of the central aims of the German policy in the Middle East. The extent of the strains between Germany and Israel were underscored last month when Merkel canceled a summit with Netanyahu that was scheduled to take place in Jerusalem in May. Israeli officials have also acknowledged that relations are at a low point, although they claim that the link between the two countries remains strong. Here in New York City, we have seen a major spike in hate crimes over the past few months, with much of it on Jewish people, and now city officials are cracking down. We're trying to do it here in this city with a very aggressive uh, ability to stop hate crimes and to prosecute hate crimes and bias crimes. Although the city's low crime has gotten even lower, there has been a 55% jump in hate crimes in recent months. And according to the NYPD, the number of anti-Semitic hate crimes rose by a shocking 94% compared to a year ago. According to the NYPD task force, between January 1st and February 26th this year, there were 68 hate crimes in the city, when during that same time last year, there was only 44. Between those same times, the number of anti-Semitic crimes jumped from 18 a year ago to 35 so far this year. And according to the police, no other category of hate crimes is in the double digits. The increase of hate crimes targeting Muslims has also been on the rise. Research from San Bernardino and California State University found that hate crimes against American Muslims has increased nearly 80% since 2015. Donald Trump has signed a new executive order that imposes travel restrictions for citizens from six Muslim-majority countries. This comes after the first version was blocked by a federal judge in Seattle. President Trump has dropped Iraq from the new travel ban list, which now includes Sudan, Syria, Iran, Libya, Somalia and Yemen. The citizens of these six countries will not be able to obtain U.S. visas for the next 90 days. Iraq was reportedly dropped following pressure from the Pentagon and State Department, which 
had urged the White House to reconsider given Iraqi forces' role in fighting ISIL inside their own country and given the U.S. support of the Iraqi forces. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson indicated as much. Iraq is an important ally in the fight to defeat ISIS. This intense review over the past month identified multiple security measures that the State Department and the government of Iraq will be implementing to achieve our shared objective of preventing those with criminal or terroristic intent from reaching the United States. According to the new directive, however, the Trump administration plans to cap the number of refugees it accepts at 50,000 a year, down from the 110,000 the Obama administration accepted. Two days before the Trump administration rolled out the new version of what critics call a Muslim ban, Vermont Democrats elected the nation's first Muslim state party chairman. Fasel Gill was elected Saturday by the Democratic State Committee as interim chair. Gill said, To have a Muslim and immigrant to be the state party chair sends a really strong message to Trump and his type of politics that this is not where the country is at. With U.S.-Mexico diplomatic relations at a new low, President Enrique Peña Nieto has become one of Mexico's most unpopular presidents. Protesto guardar. Since his election in 2012, the Mexican president has been hit by what he called a series of unfortunate events. But Mexicans place the blame squarely on him. His response to U.S. President Donald Trump's anti-Mexican policies was viewed by many as weak. The mass disappearance of 43 college students in 2014 sparked national outrage. And a series of corruption scandals have taken a toll on the Mexican president, who was once considered a reformer. He is doing a very bad job, and he is taking us to a very bad place we have never been before. I think he should resign. Many Mexicans feel that way, but we will never do anything about it except just complain. Loretta Lynch now calling for blood, encouraging protesters to help get the president out of the White House, even if it costs them their lives. They've marched. They've bled. Yes, some of them have died. This is hard. Every good thing is. We have done this before. We can do this again. Well, the former Obama attorney general also using that video to accuse the Trump administration of trampling on civil rights. However, she failed to offer any shred of evidence supporting that claim. Last <laughs> Thursday at Middlebury College in Vermont, writer Charles Murray and Professor Allison Stanger were attacked by a violent mob of left-wing creeps out to stop Murray from a planned lecture. Stanger was hospitalized with injuries. We contacted the college over their disciplinary response they just got back to us two pages of nothing. <laughs> but without real action against those who use violence to silence speech, the next step has to be anarchy. European Union leaders agreed Monday to set up a military training headquarters in Brussels. But not all member states think this is a good idea. Even though officials have said this won't be a European army, some have argued this force sounds an awful lot like NATO, which includes 22 of the 28 EU nations. Britain's been one of the strongest critics of this move, arguing a military headquarters risks undermining NATO. But the UK's sway within the EU has dropped since the Brexit vote. Supporters of the headquarters note while NATO includes most of the EU nations, six countries are left out, and several non-EU nations that are part of NATO may be less tied to European security. One of those is the US. President Donald Trump has alluded to focusing less on NATO if European countries don't boost their defense spending. But France and Germany have argued the continent needs to be able to fend for itself. To help prevent it from sounding like a new NATO, the headquarters will be run by a director instead of a commander. Also, the scope of the headquarters will start out small, taking over three existing EU training missions in Africa. But the New York Times quotes the Belgian foreign minister saying, as for a European army, maybe later. Elsewhere, outgoing French President Francois Hollande says that it's his duty to prevent a victory for far-right leader Marine Le Pen in the upcoming election. In an interview with European newspapers, Hollande said that France will be at risk if Le Pen succeeded him as president. He added that his ultimate duty is to make sure that France is not won over by person with divisive programs, election surveys and forecasts 
for the round of uh, French presidential elections set to be held on April the 23rd show that Le Pen leads the poll with around 27 percent of vote intentions with centrist candidate Emmanuel Macron coming second. The far-right leader who is uh, known for her anti-immigrant rhetoric has promised that if she won the presidency she will hold a referendum on France's exit from the European Union. Now the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer says that London will fight back if the EU does not strike an acceptable deal on Brexit. We will fight back. We will forge new trade deals around the world. We will build our business uh, globally. Uh, we will go on from strength to strength and we will do whatever we need to do to make the British economy competitive and to make sure that this country uh, is a great, has a great and successful future. Now Hammond refused to rule out a cut to corporate tax in a bid to attract investment away from Europe. Earlier, a former UK official said the bloc was set to demand up to $60 billion from Britain. However, a committee in the British House of Lords said UK could legally leave the EU without settling its accounts. Prime Minister Theresa May is expected to trigger Article 50 of the EU's Lisbon Treaty by the end of this month. That will start a two-year withdrawal process, after which the UK will not be a member of the Union any longer. Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives have unveiled legislation to repeal the nation's health care reforms known as Obamacare. has decided not to hear the case of a transgender teenager. Gavin Grimm sued his school board in Virginia over access to the boys' restrooms. The justices were planning to hear the case later this month, but today decided to send it back to a lower court. And this decision comes after the Trump administration rolled back Obama-era guidelines that advised schools to let students use the bathroom of their chosen gender. The lower court previously sided with the Obama administration and with Grimm, citing the Obama's guidance. It will now get another look at that ruling and take a new crack at the issue. A number of authors and scholars are saying that Jesus never existed. But in the age of the internet and self-publishing, these arguments have gained enough traction that some of the world's leading New Testament scholars feel compelled to publicly take them on. Those who argue against Jesus having existed bring up the following points. The uncanny parallels between pagan stories in the ancient world and the stories of Jesus. There are no credible sources outside the Bible that say Jesus existed. The Apostle Paul never referred to a historical Jesus. A 5.9 magnitude earthquake struck Surigao City over the weekend, leaving one person dead and injuring more than 40. The disaster happened Sunday morning, March 5th. A 65-year-old woman reportedly died of cardiac arrest. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology said the tremor was a strong aftershock of the 6.7 magnitude quake that hit the city last month. Authorities said the epicenter of the quake was about 13 kilometers southwest of Surigao City. Fivolk said the city felt the quake at intensity 6, while tremors reached areas in South Leyte at intensity 4 and 3. According to PTV Philippines, a dozen residential and government buildings were partially damaged. Power was cut off in Surigao City, but was restored later on Sunday. Classes on Monday were suspended. Meanwhile, authorities warn residents of possible flash floods and landslides as a storm sweeps through the region. Environmental pollutants are killing millions of young children around the world. According to two new reports from the World Health Organization, one in four deaths among children under the age of five can be linked to environmental hazards. That's 1.7 million deaths every year. These hazards include unsafe water, lack of sanitation, indoor and outdoor pollution, secondhand smoke, and inadequate hygiene. Officials say such unhealthy environments can lead to fatal cases of malaria, diarrhea, and pneumonia. 
the study's authors agree that air pollution is the biggest problem. A separate report conducted by the United Nations Children's Fund last year found that nearly 600,000 children under the age of five die every year from diseases caused by air pollution. Experts warn these child deaths will only continue to increase if we don't reduce these environmental risks.